Um, cool. So we have Riot, uh, two-year-old German Shepherd, mm -hmm. um, intense puller. That's what I saw in your. I, that's what I remember from the form. Yes. Um, but yeah, just go ahead and fill me in on Riot. Uh, what you guys are looking to accomplish and what um, you know about Riot and everything like that. Okay. Any, anything I need to know. Sure. Do you want to do anything? Um, well, yeah. He he does he does pull a lot. Um, more so when we have the other dog with him. Um, we have a, uh, is a, like a, like a gentle lead harness for him. Uh, when it's just me and him walking, he's, a, he's normally okay. He doesn't really pull a whole lot. Whenever we have our other dog who is a, uh, who's a pit mix, I don't know if it's like a, uh, uh, if he's like a competition type that, I don't know. Uh, but he, he pulls a lot more when the other dog is with us. He pulls when I walk him by himself with me. So he's, he's pulling. Got it. Um, anything else? Um, he's become more leash reactive um, as he's gotten older. We are planning on neutering him, um, but he had a little bit of right elbow dysplasia. And so we saw an ortho vet that recommended waiting to neuter him until he was about two. Um, and he was actually really malnourished too when we um, when we got him a year ago. And so they just said with growth plates and everything, just wait until he's two um, and then neuter him. So we are going to do that, but he right now um, is still intact. But I've noticed as he's gotten a little bit older and our other dog Cody is doing it now too, where they both become more leash reactive, um, where Cody wasn't when we didn't have Riot. Cody is the alpha. Riot hasn't really tried to, to challenge him. Cody is smaller. He's about 55 pounds. Um, but yeah, he's definitely become, they'll bark at other dogs. Riot isn't, we haven't noticed any aggression um, towards other humans or dogs. We have, um, you know, with COVID, less people, but we still have people come over to the house and he's fine as long as we're fine. You know, so haven't noticed any, I actually have never heard him growl. So haven't noticed anything like that, but I definitely think the leash reactivity we've noticed, definitely the pulling. Um, I think they're the two really big things we've noticed with him. Oh, and the, the hurting tendencies. Too. Okay, hurting. So he he does that. We actually have a, a dog walker who she's wonderful. This is all she does. Um, she usually takes them to a dog park two times a week. We're in healthcare and so our schedules sometimes overlap and we're gone for 12 plus hours. He actually um, was hurting a dog and he's been going for a year, was hurting a dog at the park last week, a female wine rider, and I guess she kind of tried to run. And so we ended up just gashing her leg a little bit because he was hurting, there was no aggression. Um, but because of the, he was hurting and kind of grabbed her leg, so. Which, which he does to, which he does to Cody. He right? does. Cody's the Cody's the small the, <laughs> our other dog. He'll uh, he'll go to jump up on the couch, and as he's jumping up, Riot will run up behind him and like nip at his leg. Yeah. Um, not obviously not hard, yeah. but it, he will nip at his legs. Okay. On a regular basis. Um, and then Riot caused a gash on the dog he was hurting. Yes. Oh, I see. I see. And then. Um, yeah. But that was it. It wasn't like a fight or it was just like a... No fight. No, Susan said it purely even the other owner recognized that there was no aggression. There was no fighting. He wasn't being aggressive. He was playing. You know, so it was an accident. Got it. Got it. Cool. Um, anything else? <clears throat> I think that's... Well, so another, one thing. more thing. He was just fine. But we... So we got him from some owners that had him. Wasn't a great situation. Oh, um you know, he wasn't rescued, but we feel like he was, he was malnourished. Um, and they, so we had a brother, but they were using uh, laser pointers on the puppies. So we adopted him when he was about 10 months. Um, so he's gotten a lot better. We've tried different things, but shadows sometimes are a thing for him well, where he'll try to bite at shadows and chase shadows. So any type of reflection on the ground. I mean, he's, it's almost to a point of obsession. Yeah. Where he won't pay attention to anything else if he, if there's any type of uh, like you know, your your watch yeah. shines on the wall, yeah, like we'll take our energy. watches off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so I have pulls on leash, um, reactive, uh, herds, dogs, <laughs> um, <laughs> and then uh, shadows and uh, glares. Correct. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Cool. Anything else? 
I think that's it. We've okay. tried the pinch with him, pinch collar. which doesn't seem to do anything. A variety of harnesses, nothing. Yeah. And then, yeah, okay, cool. We'll get into those tools and everything. Okay. Um, okay. So, <clears throat> um, looks like, again, it looks like you're just kind of, you're just looking to address uh, kind of like the leash walking skills, mm -hmm. um, which kind of goes in hand in hand with the reactivity shadows and glares in a way. And I'll explain how all those kind of tied together okay. with the way we train. Um, so <clears throat> we have um, sounds like just frustration and overstimulation, a little bit of, of that. Um, so harnesses um, promote pulling. So huskies wear harnesses to pull the sled, horses wear harnesses to pull the carriage, um, we use, we also use harnesses in protection training to create aggression. That's where harnesses come into play. So sometimes when owners get a puppy and they have the harness, they could be unintentionally creating a protection dog, right? Because dogs have what is called opposition reflex. When you pull back on the harness, they pull forward. Mm -hmm. If you pull left, they pull right. If you pull right, they pull left. If you pull forward, they want to pull back or not want to move. <clears throat> so in protection training, we'll have the dog on the harness will pull, release, pull, release, and the dog is trying to go. It's like, uh, like in those movie scenes where like the guys at the bars are gonna fight and then like one guy holds the other guy back and then the other guy gets more into it and wants to go, right. same thing. So then once we've created enough aggression from the dog, we let the leash go, they, they you know, bolt and like they bite the guy in the suit and everything like that. So <clears throat> what can happen is how that forms as a dog grows older, uh, a puppy has harness, sees person, owner's like, no, we need to go. And they get pulled. This is negative energy uh, tension. So they get pulled either from the front or the back and it gets annoying. As time goes on, they think, man, every time I see a dog, every time I see a person, I get this annoying feeling and I don't like it. It must be, there must be a connection between the two. So then they, it starts, they start to get frustrated, which turns into reactivity. And then sometimes it can get so intense, it can turn to real aggression, but that's like rare. But that's kind of what the harnesses have created as for what we've seen. Uh, but like I said, harnesses are still a training tool and they're used for training, but um, it doesn't help with like leash walking or reactivity as well. Okay. Um, then you have the prong collar, right? Prong collars are a good step forward because now you can correct your dog. But the issue is, and it sounds like you're seeing it, sometimes it's not enough pressure. It's not. Yeah. He just pull, he, he's, yeah. He, he's really strong and it doesn't really affect him. He's, I mean, you, you can hear him like it, it affects his breathing. He pulls his heart, he pulls so hard yeah. and he just doesn't stop. Yeah. Um, so yeah, prong collar, um, you know, it's a spiky one. It's supposed to mimic a dog bite. That's where they get the shape and everything from. Um, it's good, again, you know, if a dog is responsive to it, that's great, you know, you can stop behaviors, you can do a little bit of obedience, but then once you take that leash off, you've lost all control, then it's mm -hmm. just gone. Mm -hmm. um, but other dogs, it's not enough. It's like, so funny enough, golden retrievers, they're so happy-go-lucky, they have a hard time perceiving threat, so they just kind of like, oh, whatever, I'm still gonna be wiggly, I don't know what's going on, I'm gonna <laughs> right? It's like goldens, like the power breeds sometimes have a hard time um, kind of understanding what's what's going on because they're so overstimulated, they're so like you know um, out there. So like if they're on a like their energy level or excitement level, they're at, at like an eight. But then your strongest yank or leash pop is a five. You're never going to override the brain. It's just not going to work. Um, what else is the problem? Uh, any questions so far about those tools and um, you know why? why we're kind of seeing this from riot because one the, the pulling is from, you know from the harness and then the reactivity is because he's frustrated he's overstimulated and you also got uh what's your other dog's name i forget cody cody with a c or a k uh a c c o d y c o d y and that's common where the other dog wants to be in front and they're kind of like you know they're they're focused on like that and then they're pulling and then they see dogs and it's just like a whole thing um so all those tools, like I said, prong collar is a good step forward, um, but again, it has a low ceiling uh, for uh, reliable obedience, uh, which then brings us to e-collar, which gives us 90 to 100% almost to reliable obedience. Um, 
And you guys are aware we do train with heat collars and all that stuff, right? He actually, when we got him, he had one. We still have it. Mm -hmm. um, we stopped using it. Um, I guess we didn't. We didn't know, um, but they were. I don't think they shocked him very much. Um, but they would just have it on vibrate. Um, and so we got him from Indiana. And so who is very much been trained off leash? Obviously, living in Chicago, we can't do that. Yeah. Um, so he actually, when he was younger, he was he did have an e collar. Okay. Um, you said you still have it. We have it. Do you remember what the brand was? No. Um, we can we can find it. I'm not sure. What it is, but yeah. um. But yeah, we do do e collar stuff and everything like that. So, um, e collar, the brand we use is called. And do you want me to wait for him? Oh, no, it's okay. He's just gonna go see if we, he can find it to look for this brand. Um, so the brand we use is called Dogtra. Uh, okay. This brand is the one that Jesse, or the owner of the business, has been using mm -hmm. for many, many years, and has had the most success with it. He's tried a lot of other brands. There's okay. e -Cloud Technologies, which is his like second go-to. And he's done all the other ones. Um, I don't know what they're called, like Sport Dog or like Sitting. Okay. They're e collars like that. Um, we just tried them on and you, you do see a difference with how the dog reacts to it and just overall how they are with the obedience. They'll okay. still do the commands, but the way they do it is, is uh, different. So like- okay. The mini educator or like the eco technologies, I find some dogs take it sharper than like the dog tra. And then you'll see them kind of be more edgy or more like flinchy and like about the, the commands and everything. Like okay. That. It looks like it's sport dog. Sport dog. Yeah. So um all these all these models also play into like the breed, the size, mm -hmm. the behavior we're trying to dealing with. So if we have an uh, if we have because like dog tra, they give like, you know dogs under so and so pounds get this collar but if a small dog has like aggression we're not going to choose a small collar we need the big boy collar because of the behavioral issue okay so <clears throat> we use dogtra um have you ever felt the e-collar have you ever felt the shock or anything like that no so our version i've never i've never felt sports dog but for dogtra um have you guys ever been to like a physical therapist or a chiropractor yep um, have you guys ever had stim or like a tens unit? Yep. Yes. That's e collar. That same okay. is what is on the collar. Okay. So, um, it's a muscle contractor. It's uh, electric, but it's not electricity, so it's not flowing through the dog's body. Whatever mm -hmm. the two contact points are touching is what it's con contracting or going through. Right. So if I had it in my thumb or my hand, the palm of my hand, I keep going up, up. You're gonna start to see my thumb just start to twitch like that. Mm -hmm. um, our brand has 127 levels. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, 127. Um, other brands maybe go up to 10. So think of 10, the power of 10 equal to 127. We just have so many more numbers to be more specific to the dog's personality, sure. uh, the, the, the scenario we're in and all these other things, the size and everything. Um, I don't know what Riot's number will be. Only Riot will be the one to tell us. Similar to how humans do it, in uh, physical therapy, the, the therapist would ask the client, let me know when it's too uncomfortable. They go high, 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 high. Okay, that's enough. All right. They lower it two levels down and then they let the machine do its work. It's very similar to how we do the dog training. Um, Cause there's a lot of uh, trainers that do like low level e-collar work, but then it's unrealistic because not every dog will be a level five out of 127 levels. Sure. It just doesn't happen. Sure. Sometimes dogs, right. their operating number is like a 60 or 70. That's just the number they respond to because anything else below that, they don't care. So it's okay. unrealistic to be at five if the dog is still having issues or anything like that. Sure. Um, they're waterproof. Uh, they're a lot more simpler than sports dog, sports dog I remember, because our, I just had a remote right here. Our remotes only have like three buttons and then the dial and that's all. There's no like change, you know, change this, level to go to the five levels higher or something like that i'm not sure how they work art just goes one zero all the way to 127 very easily um what else mile i think a mile long range so you have a lot of distance with it um what else about the e-collar they're rechargeable so i think sports dog is also rechargeable you don't need batteries or anything like that 
Um, but, but, but what else? What else? What else? Any questions about the e collar or anything else so far? I don't think so. I mean, we, I was kind of thinking um, even before contacting you know you guys and just our research that probably that's where we were going to have to go with him to you know stop this behavior. Yeah, an e collar isn't always for the behavioral like the like behavioral cases. Sometimes it's just for obedience or just you know normal stuff. It's used for everything. You know, we've used it on deaf dogs, blind dogs, um, you know, dogs with um, trachea issues that need to be on the harness. There's a specific mm -hmm. way to do that. Um, but e training for us starts at six months and up. Okay. Uh, we've done four month old puppies before, like the, like the, the, the breeds that are going to be big, like the Dobermans. We've had a, we, we've trained a four month old puppy here before, and she was here for a four week board and train. And by the end of her board and train, I can have her off leash walking with me. It was crazy. It was very, it's very, um, a great tool. Um, it's their language. So like prong collar, how it's physical, right? Dogs mm -hmm. are physical animals. So if I don't know, riot was mounting Cody for some reason, how do you, if Cody felt uncomfortable and didn't like it, what do you think Cody would do? Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what e collar is. It's it's supposed to you know be close to a dog bite to kind of get through the dog, and since it's physical, they understand it, right? Dog, you know, Cody wouldn't be like, "Hey, off, leave it, leave it." Right? Are they, they yeah, right? Right, right a treat right. for leaving him alone. It's just you're gonna do this, you get this, and then right should understand like, oh, there's a boundary here. I cross that. I'll give space, you know. Um, so again, e is physical. It's a it's a real feeling that is touching them, so they understand it. Um, what else? So for riot, um, the first first thing we would want to teach him is the heel. So it'll address a lot of things. So heel, our version of heel, is walk with me, stay with me, sit when I stop. So if you guys take five steps with Riot, Riot takes five steps. If you take 10, Riot takes 10. If you come to a stop, he is to automatically sit at your side, slack leash in any environment. So it's a very strict command. So strict that Riot shouldn't worry about anything else because he needs to worry about where you're walking and he needs to be having his right shoulder parallel with your left leg only, always went under this command. So the idea is with reactivity, because this is like a spectrum, first to go away is usually like humans. If there's any human reactivity, humans immediately just go away. There's, we don't need to address it. It just goes away. Um, calm dogs, uh, then rollerbladers and skateboarders and all those moving objects, reactive dogs, and then you turn the corner and there's a dog there. That's kind of how it goes as we progress through, through the reactivity. Um, the heel will address the pulling. The heel will address the reactivity because we're giving him a, uh, what is it? A go-to, like a go-to, like how do I say, like a foundation of e car because we need to teach him the, how he turns it on and how he turns it off. Because we are letting him know that you, Riot, are in control of the pressure. So you set it off and you turn it off. Once he realizes that and understands it, then we can start correcting behaviors um bu, 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 what else the so like behaviors such as hurting or like messing around with, you know cody or other dogs at the dog park like that stuff so he understands what e collar is so he knows oh don't do that okay shadows and glares also go hand in hand with the heel um it usually just goes away as well sometimes if it doesn't go away then we need to address that like separately uh, okay. but usually here and there it'll just go away um, I've, I, I think I've had one, I have, I've had like two cases where it didn't go away and we just had to, you know, kind of address it head on and then it, you know, got a lot of progress there. Okay. Um, what else? Any questions so far? Oh, I mean, you explained things pretty, pretty well. Cool. Um, there are some common questions owners have, which I'll go ahead and run through with you guys. Um, one common question is, okay, after training, um, you know, when we're done training and everything, like, do I, does he have the e collar on all the time or like, does it come off after training or is it on in the home at night? Where, when does it come on? So it's only on when you need it. 
So if you're going to go for a walk with Riot, it's going to be on just because we can't predict what's going to happen on this walk. So let's say we're, we're going on the walk and maybe a car crash happens. We're walking on the busy street and a car crash happens. Riot freaks out. You get caught off guard. Maybe Riot decides to book it and maybe like the leash slips out your hand or he slips out the collar or we've heard a lot of stories where owners get knocked down to the ground and the dog's gone. So um, Riot come won't work in that situation because Riot is in flight mode. So when dogs are in flight mode, they're literally thinking kill or be killed. So power of the e-collar is needed to override the brain in that moment. So again, it's on when you need it. So like mm -hmm. any emergencies like that, you need, you have that safety in case something like that happens. Now you're not going to be pressing the button all the time on your walk. Sure. You shouldn't be. It's just there if you need it for emergencies. So like for me and Jesse, our dogs are fully trained already. We've done all the hard work. We'll, we'll press the button like once a month, two times a month at most maybe, and like for emergency situations. So it's there in case. In the home, if you find that Riot is a good boy and he's an angel, then you don't need it. Um, if you're gonna have guests come over and you know he's really in their face and really like maybe jumpy or something, yeah. you collar him up 30 minutes prior, you address whatever that is needing to be addressed with the collar. And if you find that Riot is pretty much settled throughout the night when your guests are over, you can take it off or you can keep it on just in case he decides to get excited again. Um, but, but, but what else? And at dog park, um, you can have it on as well just to correct certain behaviors um, like mounting, chasing, herding. You can kind of just like stop those behaviors. Um, and it makes life a lot easier because I think like we had an owner who had a little, a little like a mini doodle, like a mini mixed doodle. And she was so fast. And like every time she wanted to go leave the dog park, she just book it and she had no chance of catching it. Yeah. So or made, you know, made the puppy come back to her. So then she was able to leave. So it saves a lot of work, you know, yelling, frustration and time. You know, it's just because all you're doing is pressing a button. Right. Um, Jesse will tell his clients like the world is really like button based. So like now there's buttons to elevators, buttons to um to start your car now and buttons for everything, right? Mm -hmm. so it's very yeah. easy for like the owners to get used to it because you're just simply pressing a button. You're not, right. saying, you're not, there's no other thing. There's nothing fancier. So like other trainers will, you know, be like specific, like, you know, yank harder or doing all these other things. It's just, you're just pressing a button. So it's very simple. Um, any other questions about that? I don't think so. Okay. Um, Another common question is, how come when I take the e-collar off, Riot starts pulling again? So it's called opportunistic behavior. Um, humans do it. So <laughs> example we like to, an example we like to use is, um, do you guys drive on the highway? Yeah. Do you guys go to the speed limit? <laughs> and then what, <laughs> what happens when we see a squat car? Slow down. Exactly. So then, it's just a nature thing, right? If we know we can get away with something, we're going to get away with it. Same right, thing for dogs. Right. Dogs are very opportunistic. Um, <laughs> so it's normal. It has nothing to do with the training. It has nothing to do with what you guys are practicing. It has nothing to do with the e-collar. It's just nature. If, if they find out they can get away with something, they're going to take advantage of that. All dogs are different. Some dogs are, you know, very opportunistic, you know, have that, that behavior in them. Some dogs just are very like, no, nope, I'm not going to do that ever again. You know, they're all dogs are different. Um, right. Just a heads up with that. If that happens, mm -hmm. it's normal. Um, so uh, were you guys looking for like a one-on-one -on -one in person, a board and train or a daycare and train, or do you guys have an idea yet? Or I can run through the programs for you if you want. I looked at, I think we were interested in one-on-one. One-on-one? Yeah. 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 I think it'd be hard to the boarding. I don't know. Um, and you know, obviously he's not, um, he's not, he's intact, you know, so a daycare type situation. Um, but I think, I think we benefit best from one-on-one. -on -one, I think. Well, I think on, on top of he's learning and we're learning too. I mean, if we're, if, yeah. if, I, if I'm not seeing what you're doing, I yeah. don't know how to continue it. Yeah. You no, know? exactly. Yeah. Um, Good. Uh, so yeah, one on one, uh, we meet for one hour once a week. Um, so <clears throat> the way our programs work is we have the six week program, 
the nine week and the 12 week. So if it's so the six week, think of the six week program, like um, I walk my dog around the block and you have that structured walk, no reactivity, no pulling. It's very structured, calm walk. Then you go to the dog park, then you need recall to call him back and then you go home. That's the six week. The nine week program is I walk my dog around the block, no reactivity, very structured. I need recall when I let him off leash or in the dog park to go home. And then I also go to outdoor patios. I need him to lay down, not move for an hour or two. 12 week is all those things. And then you go off leash and then you go hiking like every other weekend with him. And you need him to be fully off leash trained. And like you have all these other fancy emergency commands if like, you know, because there's deer and coyotes in those environments. So if you're just trying to address the reactivity, um, are you guys interested in a recall or is that come oh, yeah. with? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, so I think like the six week would be probably good for you guys, uh, but it also depends on you. If you're looking to have more control, then the nine week would be good. But if you're not like if you're not going on hikes or anything like that or not doing anything crazy with him. You don't need to do 12 weeks. I mean, I think it's something that we would like to do in the future. I mean, it's obvious we're not going to be doing it every week. but <laughs> no. yeah. yeah, it's all up to you guys. You know, if, if you're wanting to have ultimate control, all of it, 12 week is the program to go to. But like I said, if you're just trying to get the walks down, recall, then it's a six week. So it's just depending on what you're, you're, you're wanting from Riot. Okay. Um, so... If let's say, for example, you choose the 12 week program, it'd be, this is all for example, Sundays, 1 p.m., 12 times at Oz Park. So we, op oh, sorry. So we operate at Oz Park. Um, oh. Is that close by with you guys? That's pretty close, yeah. Um, so we operate at Oz because everything is there off leash dogs, re other reactive dogs, bikes, rollerbladers, baseball games, everything is there. So if you can train your dog at Oz Park, I'm pretty sure you can train your dog anywhere. <laughs> so uh, we do Oz Park Sundays, 1 p.m., 12 times, plus one. So that plus one is in case it rains or, you know, life happens. So you have an extra slot in case you need to cancel. Once that slot is used, you'll have to wait to kind of hop back on the calendar and seeing what the availability is looking like. Um, everything is recorded as well. So if you ever forget how to do a command, you can always go back to your video, you know, oh, nice. yeah, riot lesson two or lesson three, stay. And then you can watch how do we just stay again? And then that's how you get okay. that. Um, what else? Another thing, ECO is very transferable. So with usually with like, you know, more than one person, uh, clients will tell us, yeah, you know, we were, you know, the dog was trained really well but only when the trainer was there, the dog would behave. Once the trainer left, dog misbehaved. So that doesn't happen with Ecar because if if you find that his number is 30, for example, right? And someone like maybe a child presses the button on 30, it's still 30. There's no, he's stronger than her or she's more right. stronger than him. Right. It's 30, right. 30. So with partners on one-on-one, -on -one, number one will do all the hard work first then they hand the dog and the leash to partner number two. And when partner number two goes, it's super easy. It's like, they don't have to do anything. So that's like another wonder of e is like, you know, for your dog walker, you can teach them. Or sometimes I think we've had certain um, clients who brought the dog walker with them so they can watch. But if you teach them how to do it, it'll be super easy. Cause for her, again, 30 is 30. So it wouldn't be mm -hmm. like, you know, is she going to be strong enough? Or is she going to how to use the e or anything like that? So it'd be very simple. <clears throat> and then she can also watch the videos if you want her to as well. Okay. Um, what else? Any questions about the one-on-one? -on -one? I don't think so. Cool. Is it the access to the videos, you just, you, you keep them for forever? Or? Yes. Uh, so we post them on a YouTube channel. Yeah, YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, we don't get that, we're not like, like, we don't get that many views on YouTube. So it's like, if you're not, I, you guys don't get an <laughs> audience or anything like that. I think like one guy was like, one guy checked out his videos for the first time. He's like, and like the next lesson, he didn't really talk that much. Cause he's like, he, he talks a lot. He's like jokes around. 
and he's like, I'm not talking anymore. I'm like, why? He's like, my last video got 11 views. I'm like, dude, like, just, it was just really funny. He's like, people are watching me, so I'm not gonna talk. Um, but no, yeah, they're on YouTube. Um, and what else? I'm trying to think. So after this consultation, um, I'll send um, my assistant Tina. Will send you kind of the in-person programs. Um, I don't need an answer right now, but she'll have those programs listed out for you with the prices, uh, what a payment plan would look like with those with those programs. The e-car I recommend for Riot, and you have two options for that. Um, it'd be you order it yourself off Amazon. She'll provide you the link, or you can purchase it through us. Same price and everything. Uh, a lot of in-person clients tend to buy it off Amazon so they can fidget around with it, get used to it, get sure. used to the, the yeah. sure. and then come first class, they already have some knowledge about it. Sure. Um, she'll also send you a form that needs to be signed, just like an agreement thing before we start okay. uh, the classes. So once that form is signed, she'll get a notification and then that's when the billing and the booking process begins. And then we'll, you know, you give, a, you give her your availability and then she works with that, you work with your availability. Um, but, but, but what else? Anything else? Any other questions? I don't think so. No. Yeah. no. Cool. Um, come first class. Um, definitely either use, we can use the prong collar, but we're not going to want to use that harness. Okay. Um, and then we're also going to, if you do end up not using the prong and not using the harness and you want just a regular collar, we always tell our clients to get the uh like one of these it's like the one that like goes to the loop like this and then you buckle it so not he, the snap ones because if you get the snap ones they tend to just break or snap off he's got a they both have tactic up collars oh nice nice so it's a big yeah thing, right yeah, yeah. they're Ooh. yeah custom made yeah, yeah, they, yeah um, that, that thing's not gonna let go <laughs> oh, yeah i've seen those um and then were you guys wanting Cody to get trained too, or is it just Riot you're focusing on? Really just Riot right now. You know, Cody's- Cody, Cody actually already does a lot of that. He yeah. stays right next to us. He does a pull. He's really good. He's um he's 42% fit. He's got GSD lab, Australian cattle dog. We did the DNA profile. He was a rescue. Um, so he's, he's highly intelligent. He can be manipulative, but he's super smart. He He's really good, so. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, all righty, um, I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything. <clears throat> Any other questions? Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, that was that's really all we want to address with him because he really, you know, and it's sad because we've noticed as he's gotten bigger um, that even our neighbors where we live, you know, people walking their dogs, they're scared of him. You know, they, and it's, uh, people think he's aggressive just because he's a German Shepherd. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I own a German Shepherd. I um, saw that. Yeah. Um, she, she, I remember she does not under, I mean, she, she kind of understands prong color, but it's just kind of like, what? I don't care. Yeah. Right? Even right. like Jesse, Jesse has a Chihuahua, a pip, a petty right now. Um, his Chihuahua Poncho, uh, when he first, when he, before like he became a dog tramp, he was just, you know, getting used to it and everything. Um, he had, he tried, cause his chihuahua was reactive, intense. So then he did a prong collar and then he would do the leash pop. And then like he kept doing it until the dog would, puppy would stop, but she, the poncho didn't stop, this little chihuahua. And just <laughs> the hardest yank, the chihuahua would literally spin around and go back and bark at the dog. Prong call did not yeah, work. Right. Yeah. No. <laughs> he went to e con and everything. And then the yeah. he addressed the behavior, but um, but yeah. Um, what else? Anything else am I missing? Oh, um, one question. Um, Riot's coat. Is he like a furry guy? Is he long coat or what's his fur he's, look? He's a shorter coat. Shorter coat. Okay. Um <clears throat> my my German Shepherd is also short coat, but her coat is like super thick um so for her i didn't use the regular probes i end up switching it out for like longer posts to kind of dig into her fur because she had such thick coat and it made my connection with the numbers and everything so much more easier 
So I'll bring those first class <clears throat> and just in case, um, you know, I do, you know, we're having connection issues or anything like that. Okay. Um, this fur is pretty thick. It's, it not, it's not long, but it's thick. It's yeah. Thick. Okay. Um, so I think that's all. Um, if anything pops up, feel free to email me with any questions. Um, but other than that, Tina will be in touch with you soon. And Great. she'll most likely send that follow-up email like either tomorrow or maybe, I don't know if she'll do it tonight. We'll see. Um, but cool. Anything else? Great. I, that's it. Well, I thank you so much. I just, you know, I saw some reviews online and went and looked at your website. Um, and I just, what Jesse's doing and everything, it just really seemed to jive with what, you know, we want from Riot and how we want his training to go, so. Yeah, and then, um, you know, I'm, we're doing the consultation, but if you want to work with Jesse, um, you can always switch or anything like that. Or... You know, it's honestly fine. When I saw that you own a German Shepherd, you, I, like, that's perfect. Cool. So you understand how their mind works. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, a good watch would be, uh, if you want to get an idea, uh, what was the dog's name? We had a German Shepherd that was reactive and like this dog would like stand up and scream and like do the whole thing. I don't remember her name, but lesson one was really good. Um, she eventually just stopped that whole lesson, like immediately just stopped. So um, yeah, I'm excited. Um, and then other than that, like I said, we'll be in touch. Okay, great. Sounds Thank you good. so much. Alrighty guys, have a good one. Bye. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Bye.